Hello there, people of the internet. My name is Odur Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero. Now, everybody is... <laughs> uh, I wanted to say everybody's a product of sex, correct? Yeah. 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 Everybody is a product of sex. And um, one of the things about sex that nobody wants to talk about it, but everybody wants to be interested and consume it. Consume it. Yeah, do it. Do it, right? Perform it. Perform it. Mm. So today I am having a guest, Mr. Maurice Matheka, who is, who is a sexologist or a sex coach. We have a lot of questions that people have sent me online for him to tackle and talk about, but also a lot of things that we are going to be talking about. Because, you know, uh, uh, Mateka is that, uh, I'm not going to say, tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to hear what you're going to say. No, I wanted to tell you that I grew up in church. Okay. Right. And I hear that a lot. Growing up in church, you don't talk about sex. So let me welcome you to the to the to the podcast. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for honoring my invitation. When I first, uh, when I when I when I was writing the invitation, I didn't know w what you were going to say. Okay, and I'm so happy that you like bold conversations and mm. you decided that let's do this bold conversation. Oh yeah. So thank you very much. We are going to be talking about a few things and then answering the question that the audience was asking about you. Apparently, mm -hmm. you are very well known. Okay, that's always a good thing. Yeah, you're very well known, and people it, know. It means that I'm doing something, right? Yeah, mm. it means you're doing something, something great. We are going to talk about life and how uh, you ended up in sex coaching, okay. and then we are going to talk about a man and a woman. You know, the biology of each and how they enjoy sex. Okay. We're also going to be talking about the elephant in the in every room. Okay. You know, orgasm. Why women get the short end of the stick. Okay. Do you agree with that statement? Yes, I do. <laughs> We're going to be talking about sex, toys, and masturbation. Mm -hmm. You know, these are bold things, man. You know, if you well, if if you if they're if, only bold in a conservative environment, but I, I think we're just pretentious. We're not that conservative. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so tell me about a little bit about your life. About my life, yes, uh, very well, liberal. Yeah, um, I know you're going to ask how I ended up being a sexologist, mm, but uh, but a, but a bit of your of your of your of your childhood, how where you grew up, where you were born. Um, I was, I was born in Dar es Salaam. Ah, Tanzania. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I've lived in the coast. Actually, I did most of my growing up in Mombasa. Uh, but my Swahili is shit. <laughs> Why so? Because I just mainly spoke English. Yeah. My environment was English, so I spoke English. Yeah, your accent is a bit um, is a bit from the from an international school, is it? Yeah, you can say that. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it and is. Then, and then the tapping is gonna be on the mic all the time. Oh, it is. <laughs> yes. Or they're gonna think people are having sex yeah. under the table. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Oh my God! Um, yeah, so I, I I had a great childhood. Mm. Um, I got to travel. Um, I've lived in five countries. Mm. Uh, Kenya being the only one in Africa. Um, always been. Which other countries, please? <laughs> uh, England, Scotland, mm. Wales, Sweden. I did a bit of Denmark. Mm. Uh, yeah, so I've, I've been around. Uh, the last stint was eleven years in the UK, which was fun. That's why I ended up being a sexologist. But I actually went there to do IT and management. Mm. Uh, I gave that to my late father. And then I told him I needed to find something that was different to what everybody else studies. Mm. And I found the study of sexuality. Mm. I was intrigued by it. Didn't really know what it was about. Dug into it. Four years later. Qualified. 21 years later. I'm sat here with you. Mm. And I enjoy teaching people about sexuality. So you went to school for it? Yes, for four years. Oh, where? In the UK. Huh? Mm. What do they teach? I mean, four years is a long time teaching about well, teaching about sex. It's two years of gender psychology because you need to understand the psychology of how people relate. Mm -hmm. And then there's another two years of now studying the physiology of sexuality. Mm. About the vagina, the penis, the neurochemicals, the stimulators, what arouses us, relationship setting, because there's so many. People only know mm. about marriage but there's so many types of relationship settings uh then you just break down that at the end of the day when we're born we have an identity mm. and that identity is sexual mm. when you were born you were what male yes 
when a female is born, she has a certain. That attribute. was my parents. Yeah, I don't know for sure. Yeah. So my point is, before we are named, before we have a name, we have a sexual identity. Mm. So we know that we are born with tools to facilitate sexual behavior. Yet when we're growing up, it's the one thing that's tried to flood it out of our system that mm. we should be ideal human beings, whatever that looks like. And most human beings who are afraid of sexuality are very. I don't know. Bored. Mm. Mm. So you are you, you are in the UK doing. Um, what What do you remember most about about study? What is What is the most thing that intrigued you the most? What is the What is the one thing that intrigued you the most when you are studying sex and sexology and psychology and things like that? Intrigued? I don't know, but surprised me that I had to do a lot of reading first. Yeah, I, I thought the class would just be naked people, you know, touching each other, mm. exploring. Mm. I didn't know we had to read, so that was the first thing. <laughs> uh, intriguing yeah. is I got to break down the primitive side of who we are. Mm. We're sexual beings, and I'm not talking about monogamy. I'm not talking about polygamy. We are sexual beings first, uh, but in the societies we live in, it's controlled, hence why you're given all these rules about sex. Yet, w- if you remove the rules, sex becomes more credible, becomes more fun. Mm. And so you've got a lot of people in marriage who are having boring sex. Mm. But they're not having boring sex when they go to Naivasha, Nanyuki, Tiani. Let's talk, about, let's talk about the rules that govern sex. Yes. The rules in courts. Yes. Why, as a, as a psychologist, why do you think we have rules governing sex? Especially, so t- uh, touch, 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 touch a little bit on religion, which is, which is the... Well, cult. I was going to go there. Yeah. Please. It's, it's the driving force for all these rules. And you see the thing is, most rules are very ancient. They've been there for thousands of years. And those rules only applied to those who believed in the faith. For example, when people ask me about cheating, I only tell them the word cheating is in reference to somebody who is going against a certain rule. If you don't subscribe to those rules, then cheating does not apply to you. For example, I, I, I don't believe in monogamy. So cheating does not apply to me. It applies to those who believe or subscribe to it. Does that make sense? Last last week, I was talking with a lady who was talking about who, who believed that the cause, the number one cause for divorce in Kenya right now, is yes. monogamy. Yes, it is. Monogamy is a fa- fallacy. It's not manageable. How come we're not monogamous to the foods we eat? Explain you. How come we're not monogamous? How come we're not monogamous to the foods we eat, the drinks we take? If I told you all you have to do for the rest of your life is just eat ugali and scuba wiki and nothing else, would you be fine with that? Nothing else from today and forth. For the next 30, 40 years, it doesn't matter, but just eat ugali and scuba wiki. No beef, no any other nyama, there's no fish, nothing. Just scuba wiki. What is the problem with monogamy? Um, It takes away human arousal. Because it takes the way the way we look at one another. You see, the thing is, first and foremost, it's driven also by this terminology called love. And sexually, love is one of the most useless ingredients we have. Again, to the ugali. When you, went, when you want to make ugali, what two ingredients do you need? <laughs> water you and t- flour. Take away the water. Ah, uh, what? Take away the water. Fire? You, no, no, no. You just go, f- take away the water. Will you have ugali? No. So that's what happens. You deflavor sex. Yeah. When you tell me I can only talk through this microphone and nothing else in life, this microphone is going to bore me to death. Mm. Humans love flavor. It's going to be chaos if we open this floodgates. And the other thing is... Um, it's going to be chaos, my the, 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 Sorry? It's going to be chaos. What, what's going to be chaos? It's going to be chaos. I mean, you're sleeping you're, with that woman, you're sleeping with that pla- No, 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 no. no, no. You're, the one, you're the one who's talked about sleeping with that woman, sleeping with... You see, now people think the alternative of not having monogamy is sleeping around with everyone. That's not the alternative. Ah. The alternative is knowing you have the choice without having to hide. I see. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. When I say I don't believe in monogamy, it doesn't mean that I want to have sex with every woman. Mm. It just means I don't want to be bound to one woman. Mm. When I have a choice, it means I can do it when I want to. Men who don't have the choice do it as frequently as they can because they want to take away the choice. Mm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like when you were a kid and you want to go out and play and your parents say you're not going out to play. When you grow out of your 
being a child and now you're a grown up and mm. you get all this freedom, how come you're not going out to play? How come you're not clubbing? When you're young, you said you're going to club for the rest of your life. Rules. But now that you're an adult, you've got freedom. What does that freedom tell you? Oh, instead of going out, let me just chill in the house and watch a movie. So when you confine me to one vagina, I'm going to want as many as I want. Mm. Fact. Because hey. first of all, the communication between me and that one vagina may break down. Mm. You need to understand, attraction does not last forever. Mm. Love, first and foremost, is not sexual. I need your audience to understand that. We sexualize love. Like, for example, because you and I are dudes, if we become boys and I get to like you, unfortunately, we live in a world, when I say a world, let's look at Kenya or Africa, whereas I can't tell you, hey, dude, you know what? I love you without somebody sexualizing it. Yeah. Yet love is just me saying there's a way I feel about you that's not sexual. Mm. It's like I, like I, can, your say vibe. I, like I can your vibe. I can say it to my brother, to my sister, because we're related. Mm. But because you and I do not have relations, most people sexualize it. Mm. You see the problem we have? Mm. If I say, oh, I love that guy, people look at me like, guy? Not to take. Why have you sexualized it? When I say, I love my dad, how come you've not sexualized that? Because that relation is not supposed to be sexualized. <laughs> but any other relation that's not blood is sexualized. So let's remove love from it because love is not the ingredient that causes me to have an erection. It's a lustful matter. I must have a lustful need for a particular woman. Mm. There's so many men and there's so many women who can tell you, I love my partner, but I'm not sexually driven to want to have sex with them mm. because it doesn't come as a package. Neither does marriage. Marriage is the merger of two people. It means I'm wearing a ring, you're wearing a ring, we share a certificate that is approved by the government. <laughs> but my penis and your vagina are not aware of this marriage. Oh! They're not. It's fact. But we have this illusion that they are. That everything is connected. Yes. The only thing is, the rules now are binding. That certificate, everyone's telling me, you can't run away from her. You're now merged legally. She can take you to court. But when she was my girlfriend, she couldn't take me to court. So now I have to stay with this woman or she has to stay with me because she doesn't want to go and have a court case. Are you seeing how useless love is? Mm. Whereas with people we don't love, we tend to want to fuck them all the time. Oh. Fact. Because we've got they a lustful drive they, towards them. They say you have to have feelings. You have to have an attraction. You know, okay. sex without... Uh, you know, sex without that attraction, without that love, without something more is, is, is useless. Okay, first and foremost, you have a penis. Mm -hmm. When was the last time you had a conversation with your penis about love? Never. There you go. Men understand what I'm saying and <laughs> women understand what I'm saying. <laughs> We're not driven by love. Love is an emotion. Yes, it is. Yeah. Sexually, it's a very weak emotion. We're told love conquers everything. If it did, there would be no need for my profession. If I love, teach if, men and if, women yeah. about their genitalia. I'm known for conditioning the vagina so the woman can basically own her ability to orgasm. Mm. If I had to wait for her to fall in love with me, I'd have so many women in love with me. Mm. Is that practical? That's no. bonkers. It's is bonkers. <laughs> when people go out of town mm. in the Kenyan context... Yeah. Do any of those people love each other? No, but they love what they are about to do. Mm. They're about her drinks, yeah. her fun, yeah. the drive down, <laughs> the sex going to happen. And then you have somebody in the house who the you love. The car going up and down. There yeah. you go. <laughs> and in the house, there's nothing going up and down. <laughs> Erections are not felt in the house. Mm. Why? Because love is useless. You have to manifest a lustful nature for each other. Mm. It's important. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. That's the one ingredient. If you look at religion, the word lust has been demonized. Yet it's the one reason why we're attracted to people. Maybe it is just the name. Yeah. What, what lust? But yeah. lust, okay, lust is far more powerful than love. And for me, lust makes sense. When a woman tells you, I want to make love to me, or if she tells you, I want you to fuck me. Which one engages you more? Oh, I'm not so you, know, you know, <laughs> you know which one engages you more. You know, your you, even your eyes lit up. You don't want to say which one, but you know which one. Damn! You know which one it is, and that's the difference. 
We have all these lovey dovey oh, terminology. If a woman says, I wanna fuck you, things change. There you go. But when she says, I want you to make love to me, you're like, whoa, what does that even look like? That sounds like commitment. Do we have to go shopping after that? You know what I mean? But if she just says, I want you to fuck me, you know the agenda. You know she wants you to tear her vagina out. Well, not, not literally, but you know oh what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Oh, man, we are going so fast. <laughs> <laughs> well, you started this. A man and a woman. <laughs> a man, a man a and a woman. The yes. biology of each and how they enjoy sex. Mm-hmm. Man, they say you... A man is a woman is like a jiko. The man is like whatever with a gas cooker. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And this this goes down to how much women have always complained about men that a man just can't satisfy me. There is a lady who told me that I've got twenty five vibrators mm-hmm. because a man is useless. Mm-hmm. You know, I want to cuddle with them, but I don't want them to fuck me because and, they and can't she, do it. And she has a point. So. Let's break down the biology for for for, for, for <laughs> break down the biology. Okay, um, if I was going to write a book about a woman's arousal, that book could easily have a hundred pages or even four hundred. If I was going to write about arousing a man, I just need a paragraph. <laughs> it's as simple as that. We don't need a lot of coaxing. Whereas a woman needs certain things that a lot of men don't provide. One, she needs mental stimulus, which looks like we've got all these gadgets, our phones. When you text her, you know, like, if you're trying to arouse a woman and you're texting her, you're telling her things that are seductive. You're texting her, like, how's your day? What are you wearing? You know, last night, last week, can't wait for two weeks from now. You're arousing her. You're telling her how sexy she is and blah, blah. Whereas if you look at the man who's now used to his woman, even when he was courting, he was probably not teasing her. So for her, sex is obligational. She's not mentally aroused. She's not feeling, oh my God, when I get home, I just want to have sex with my man. She's thinking when I get home, I have to give him sex because I owe him sex. And if I don't give him sex, he's going to think I'm sleeping somewhere else. So it becomes an obligation. And that's what women are complaining about. When it comes now (laughs) down to the agenda itself men are not applying foreplay you'll be surprised how many men actually go down on a woman Mm. apparently vaginas are dirty so all i can ask men is if vaginas are dirty why the hell would you like to stick your your penis there i just don't understand it's not my tongue like my tongue can't go it's there, but no, my penis uh, can. My, my, my like, is my, my penis my, wearing? My, my, pe- my penis has and my suits? tongue are different. Sorry, my penis and my tongue are different. Bro. Yeah, but now the problem is this: what you won't do, I will do gladly for you. It's as simple as that. Hey, <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that. If your woman is used to. You see, the thing is, the women who are complaining are women who know that this exists. There's a woman who has never had oral sex. Sure, she, she has nothing to complain about. Mm. She has nothing to miss. But there's another woman, let's assume in Compass, while she was exploring, one or two guys went down on her. And she was like, oh my God, I love this. Then she eventually hooks up with a guy who now she calls my main guy or my husband, whatever it is. Mm. And he does not go down on her. Her issue is, I already know what this looks like, how it feels, but you're not providing the unfortunate thing is this, because apparently men run the world. We'll tell a woman, now you need to be, because you are with your husband, you should be happy with whatever he gives you. Yet, the husband, who has a wife, who cannot give him a blowjob, and he was used to blowjobs. He met, you know, degree holders in blowjobs when he was in campus. He demands for a blowjob. Should he receive a blowjob? Society says yes. Why? Because he's a man. Those are double standards. So it's as simple as this. Mm. I'm not asking men to suck vagina, but we will do it for you. We are willing we? participants. Who is we? The men like me will suck vagina. We will. For real. A vagina is an outlet. If you don't eat there, I will. It's as simple uh-huh. as that. <laughs> <laughs> the question actually was yes. uh-huh. the difference in the two organs. Yes. Is it is a vagina an organ? Yes, it is. 
and, it's a the, muscle. Pen- and the penis. It's an organ. Yes. What what is the difference? What that makes the, the you know that their sex very different? Okay, actually, if you invert, uh, I don't want to get too much into it, but if you invert the penis, it actually forms a vagina. But that's a how, story do, how do how do how do this is a story for today? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the science is very simple. All all the tissue and nerve endings that you require for the vagina have found in the penis. Mm. But back to your question, the vagina has a G-spot membrane, mm. which is within the vagina walls. It's like up here. If this is the vagina entry, it's right up here. Mm. It's usually two to three inches long, depending on the woman's body uh, structure and stuff. And when that area is stimulated, she has what you call spasms. Spasms, and spasms are little earthquakes. Those spasms now trigger what we call an orgasm. Like a man's orgasm is when he ejaculates semen through a urethra. Now, I teach women how to own their muscle and how it should spasm and how they should push out rather than start. Most women contract. It's a very procreational way of having sex because you as a man were designed with a penis that penetrates the vagina and her vagina starts to suck your penis like a massage. And it does that so that you can ejaculate. But now if we move away from procreational sex, you have recreational sex. What we're trying to have when we go out of town. Well, that's what that is. It is, 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 are you saying what I'm thinking? Recreational that, sex that, is where that, the that, vagina is. That, yes. that, that we were that the ways the way man and woman were created, you mm. know, originally the classic way is just to procreate. Yes. That's the first, that's the basics. But now sex has evolved. Mm. We now look for recreational sex. Recreational Proc- procreation sex. Procreation? Yes, now. Yes. Now procreation recreational sex is what we look for or what we try and manifest when we go out of town. When we do our naivashes and stuff like that, blah, blah. Like the past rally, most people didn't see any rally car, but they were in and out a penis and a vagina. That's what they were doing. There are women who enjoyed it, there are women who didn't. So they went there for recreational sex. Some of it was just procreational. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised that some of them came back and they had conceived. Such is life. So the vagina, once it has spasms, she has an orgasm. The penis is simple because he just needs to be aroused by her vaginal walls and he ejaculates at some point. Mm. The problem is, if you're going to be good at recreational sex, if you look at the man, he should be able to feel the woman's spasms in the vagina. And a lot of men tell me they don't feel that because I also talk to men. You you like, f- you feel it you feel it you, f- you is it is it is it is, is, is you feel you hear what no, you feel you can feel you can feel like for example if you've got good girth and you last long enough the in and out motion will cause air to enter the vagina and that's what we call vagina farts if you've ever heard vagina farts yeah. you you hear it farting some men have heard it some men have not that means he's got girth that's opening and stretching the vagina rim and that causes air to get trapped, and as he comes out, the air is released, hence why it's called a vaginal fart. Now, there are men, see here, this Tima Simba. Tima Simba. Yes, proudly. there's ma- proudly Kilungu. <laughs> Kilungu is where I'm from. So yeah. Tima Simba is the cluster of men who understand vaginas. And, the ma- and Mafisi is just others, everybody else. Get my point? So the men who understand vaginas can tell you that I know how to make her orgasm, not because I'm good in bed. First of all, good in bed is for small boys. Don't be good in bed. Know the vagina. It's as simple as that. Good in bed is for boys. Mm. Know the vagina is for men who understand the vagina. Our biggest competitor right now is not other men. It's women. Men can learn a few things from women. There are more women in Kenya who can give other women orgasms than there are men, in fact. Oh, and I'm saying that as a guy who has seen, I've now taught, what, almost 6,300 6, vaginas now. You have done what? I've taught 6,300 vaginas. You've taught? Taught. Mm. How you, to orgasm. you mean women? Yes, women, yes. Mm. yes. Well, they're the ones with vaginas. But I teach the vagina. See, I don't teach the woman, it's the vagina. If she had something else other than the vagina, for example, if where the vagina was, if she had a microphone, I don't know how to make microphone squirt. So I teach the vagina. Mm. It's not an insult, it's a fact. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you if you go to an ANT guy, he's dealing with your nose and your ears and stuff. So I have to focus on the organ that I'm dealing with, which is the vagina. Yeah. So I've trained vaginas. They just happen to be on women. Does that make sense? Does. 
<laughs> it does it does it does it does make sense and so then let's talk about recreational sex yes that's where the problem is <laughs> problem regards to how Be- to make it happen because when women complain about not having an orgasm they are talking recreational sex they're because, talking because of a they lack of recreational sex they're having too much procreation and procreation comes from a man's selfishness towards sex is it selfishness or just the way he understands it uh, well but why should I've, why should i worry about other people when i can orgasm okay that, that's the thing then you should have just done it by yourself huh you should have just done it by yourself you could have masturbated i don't want to masturbate yeah my point is then why are you wasting the time of the vagina i'm playing devil's advocate i'm here to protect the vaginas i have a penis i don't need to protect it but i'll protect the vaginas i've been doing it for years so that's not moving mm. selfish men are selfish men there's a guy i meet who is not selfish he just does not know how to go about it and today that guy is a masimba he understands the vagina but i have met who guys who are just selfish and they will say what you just said and, 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 when i have sex with a woman it's about me whether she comes that's her business when i was coming so you ask her what she was thinking about why didn't she come as well there's that guy now that guy he's not my business mm. just i'm saying and then he finds it weird that another guy is sucking his woman's vagina if you're not doing it right somebody will it's as simple as that uh, it's the world we live in yeah it's good to wake up to that i'm old enough to say that 20 mm. years ago I was too young but now i'm old enough i'm 48 so mm. i know my shit mm. it's as simple as that yeah. so women are complaining i can also tell the women but you also picked this guy because he's good at paying bills Mm. There's a guy in campus you can't, you can't, you who can't. used to be a guy of sucking vagina left right and center. Mm. That guy today is not doing as well as your husband. So you picked your husband based on certain You can't merits. have your cake and eat it. There you go. You see what I'm saying? When she picked her husband is because he was very good accountant, he's going to be a pilot, he's going to be an engineer, you name it. But she forgot at some point that her vagina will be knocking as well. Like you've got everything going. What about us? Why have you merged us with this guy who does not suck us? and that only comes later in life when she was younger when she was looking for that man there was certain list boxes that she was ticking he's focused good husband potential uh good father blah 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 her vagina is lost in the scheme of things and that's why you find most of my clients are uh, between 35 and 55 35 and 35 and 55 majority the small ones get the, the small ones. ones don't care why no it's not they don't care it's not a priority at that time she's looking for other things she's looking for a good job career investments husband kids her vagina starts knocking first and foremost there's also a signs to it the vagina starts to mature between 29 for early bloomers and 35 for late bloomers. Really? Yes, and that's why you find mature women mature in regards to the structure of it and the texture and how it feels. And that's why you find women who are in their 40s will always have tastier vaginas than women in their 20s. Tastier. Tastier. And tastier. the people who can the people who can confirm this are the younger guys who are going for the older women who are apparently called cougars. These are facts. These are just facts. They have just they've just they've just realized that yes, that's where the gold is. Yes, but now the problem is the men who are supposed to be viewing this older mature woman as that seductive woman who has endless passion and taste, they have a different perception. They called her my wife, mother of my children. And you know what happens to a lot of African men when they go down that road? You start looking at her different. She's no lo- she's no longer your sex kitten. or your playmate she's now your respectable woman in the house she's the house manager and you go out to look for money she's also looking for money as well because mm. women also do their thing but now your perception of her changes over time when talk, other talk, men are talk, still talk, looking talk, talk a little bit more about yes, that as other men are looking at her like god damn that woman is sexy it doesn't matter whether she has three kids six kids but for you because she has three kids the sexiness in her has left you don't find her unattractive you just don't find her sexually attractive you love this woman she's your pal you actually hug when you go to sleep you wake up you kiss her forehead whatever you do but the sex has minused because your perception of her has changed and that will not change in our sitting rooms unless we change our old fashioned traditions it's very unfortunate but today i meet girls who are 25 
she was married when she was 21. If you ask her husband, that 25-year-old, she's being categorized like the auntie and the mother. She's in that category. Yeah, and, that guy and is yet, 32. And, and, yet, and yet she has not matured, like you say. Exactly. But other men are looking at her like she's still 21. Mm. Even a woman who's 38 who has kids. Other men are looking at her, you, you, are, you are flavored pussy. I want you. But the husband's going like, no, 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 no. That's my wife. Respectable he, woman in he, society. He, he wants to go down, down, down Nairobi, Nairobi, Nairobi University. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because that's also power. He'd rather university because that's where he can get power. And power is he can take her to wherever and she'll appreciate. And he'll feel powerful. But with the wife, he's wondering, why am I going to Nyanyuki with my wife? Because the conversations we're going to have in Nyanyuki is about family. Well, it's about where, where Mother, next, next time, next Ochi. time, which school? Yes. Babe, our kids, which school? Did we come here talking about school? Or should I be eating your vagina? First of all, this guy does not eat vagina. So why the fuck did you go to Nyanyuki? Why? You know, that's controversial. <coughs> you see what I'm saying? It's not controversial. It's fact. These are the things that people need to discuss. Yeah. We're not going to have happy homes yeah. if we brush this under the carpet. Mm. We're not. Sex is beautiful, but how it's served is stale. It's very stale. Sex is beautiful, but how it is served is stale. Very stale. And when it's stale, you stop having that sexual urge. And then you just have sex because you want to manage your home. I've met too many people who tell me, we have sex five times, four times, and sometimes if we only have it twice, we have to make up next week. That's not sex. That's boredom. If that's what sex looks like, I'd rather watch a movie. Mm. Sex, you'd rather have three, four sexual episodes a month, but they're worth the stamina, the energy, the lustfulness. That's why I always tell couples, if you can, first get away from your environment. Stop having conversations in your bedroom. Because in your bedroom is where you also have arguments. Mm. So it has, a, it, it has a variety of energies, and most of them are negative. Drive out of town, but leave home at home. I've met couples who, before they met me, they decided to do a very luxurious uh, holiday thousands of miles away. You should have seen the beach and everything because they showed me the photos. But they told me, but that we were there for seven days and we didn't have sex. Wow. And I knew why. Because they took home there. I asked them, what were the activities? So you did excursions, of course. That was to see the terrain. It's beautiful. You, you read a book next to the pool? A book? You went all the way there to read a book? What were the conversations like? Oh, let me call the kids. Let me find out. Oh, Mother is trying to call me. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like, why are you talking about mbotches when you're thousands of miles next to sea? You should be, she should be swimming with the dolphins or sucking a vagina, but you didn't. So when I came back, I had to teach them how to leave that cushioned life and the perceptions they have one another. Because they just said, we're pals, but we're not motivated to have sex. So now you have to teach them how to be motivated to look at one another lustfully. For some couples, it works. For some, it doesn't. I'll tell you why it doesn't. For some, because you'll always find a couple where one of them mentally, sexually struck out of the relationship. I'm here because society has said, I can't leave you. Mm. I love you. We have kids. I'll take care of you. We have kids. But we have a mortgage. For me, yes. But for me, finding you sexually attractive is too much energy. I have to remove my clothes. I have to arouse you and arouse myself. Then I have to mount you, and I'm the only one sounding like a bear. The neighbors are thinking, when I'm fucking myself, because you're not moaning. This is tiring. So can we not have sex? Uh. And people chop each other, high five, and they agree, and they just live in harmony. When they go for family events or whatever events, they hold each other. They and, go and, what are, and what happens to the sex? They get it somewhere else. Exactly. Both of them. Eventually, both yeah, both of them at some point get it somewhere else. And Couples and have even gone to the point where they're like, you know what, let's stop hiding. I know you have a girlfriend, so you have a boyfriend. We're good. We'll be meeting here. So let's just protect each other. Here are condoms. We're good. We're good. <laughs> Couples have gotten there. Fact. Couples have gotten there. Uh, that's a fact. That's a fact. Ooh. Sometimes when you mature, you get there. Because you're asking yourself, why are we fighting each other? 
Sometimes yeah. I just want my space and you're here. Like during COVID, the number of calls I got, couples realized we love each other in small doses. I saw this nigga, I saw this woman daily. Wake up, same face. Lunchtime, same face. Sleeping, same face. What the hell? For, Even the kids are like, what? Like, for what? months. Why, why is one parent staying too long? See, daddy usually goes for like two weeks. You tell him to go. First, he's taken the remote. Well, we're now watching useless programs. We had a program in this house. This nigga who never lived with us before COVID has now taken over. He's asking for sex, but the way he's asking for sex is, wait, so you're my wife. You owe me sex. Can you imagine a woman telling you, because you're my husband, you owe me sex? How are you supposed to have an erection as you fuck her with the nose? It's just that pudding. <laughs> 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 but Becca, this is tough. <laughs> yeah, but reality. O orgasm. Yes, orgasm. Why women get the short end of the stick? Well, uh, mainly because why is it most so, why is it so difficult for a woman to orgasm? Okay, why is it quote? Why isn't why isn't the okay? Quote uh, quote. It's difficult because her vagina as a muscle. And when you look at the over-sexualized G-spot membrane, it was not designed by default to give an orgasm. It's not like you and I, we were designed with our procreational ability. At some point, due to the arousal intensity, we ejaculate semen. That's something that's inbuilt. Okay? Yeah. It's, n it's not something a man's going to be like, am I going to ejaculate today? Unless he's got an underlining problem in terms of production of semen. But for a woman... When I'm teaching women about their orgasm, when I examine their inner vagina, the one thing I notice is their G-spot does not swell. So regardless of what you do, this is where now also men are not always to blame. You may be that unselfish guy and you're really pounding on her and you're thinking, like, I am sweating, I'm almost there, and you don't look like you've even left the station. And at some point, you get off having sex with her because you're not eliciting the reaction you'd like from her. But then, what you don't know is her vagina, G-spot, never swells. So when the G-spot is conditioned, it starts to swell. When it starts to swell, when you are throbbing with her, with, within her with your penis girth, because it's girth that gives her orgasm, not length. Length is neither here nor there. But girth is everything. If your penis looks like a Stedler pen, you might struggle because Stedler pens don't usually like stretch the inner wall of the vagina. But if you've got good girth, then the width. Yes, the girth, yes, the circumference. Mm. Good girth is amazing. But if you've got good girth and her vagina G spot is conditioned to be able to swell, then she'll have an orgasm. We don't give women orgasms, their vaginas do. It's important men know that. It's not our responsibility to give women orgasms, but if you want to enter the realm of recreational sex, it is your responsibility to learn her vagina. It's like entering a sport and you're not passionate about it. How the hell are you going to win? Sex is a sport. We've just made what it. What kind of sport is it? It's a sport. It's a sexual sport. But we've been, we've been cultured to think like sex is special. People who think sex is special are having very boring sex. Sex is not special. It's like when you have a bottle of whiskey, you're going to drink it at some point, you're going to pee it out, true or false. True. Sex has an expiry date. I always find it strange when people say, how come people are not satisfied? Uh, how come you're only applying satisfaction to sex? How come, we, we've never been satisfied. We always eat. Every day we look forward to eating something, true or false. True. Why have we not been satisfied? Can I give you a really nice meal? And then I tell you, you know what? I need you to be satisfied for two weeks. Don't eat for two weeks. Would you be happy? Mm. So why is it we use that word when it comes to sex? And the truth is this. A lot of people who meet, their criteria of having a follow-up meet where they end up married is not based on sexuality. So what I found is a lot of people are incompatible, but they are together. Explain. People will... No, like, I'll, I'll meet a woman, <coughs> yeah. and she ticks all the boxes of, one, she's my pal. Today, as men, as much as we're talking about sex, there's one thing men love more than sex, and it's peace of mind. So there can be a woman who gives me all the sex I want, but whenever she opens her mouth, I get erectile dysfunction. Or I need to go and see a psychologist or whatever. But there's another woman 
When she opens her mouth, she encourages me. She promotes me. She gives me ideas. She makes me a better man. Ah, that's the one who's going to be my pal. That's the one I'm going to wake up with all the time. But do I want to suck up vagina all the time? Probably no. Are we sexually compatible? Probably no. The other one, is she an option? Yes, but she's the one who ends up being the side chick. Mm. But not the main chick. Main chick is bringing things to the home. The other one might be moving things out of the home. Oh. And draining my energy as well. The woman at home is driving me to do projects. She's doing projects. And so we're elevating. Our careers are elevating. There's a woman who makes sure this podcast runs well. Mm. This nigga's mind is seduced. He comes here and he does his shit. There's another one. When I see her as a presenter, I'm like, hey, are you okay, boss? I'm even telling guys, hey, should we talk to him? Like, he looks depressed. Whatever. And everybody knows it's that woman of his. Because oh. when you left in the morning, she had given you negative energy. But there are women who give us positive energy. And those are the women, at some point, that you align with. But I also have met a lot of people who, they have that aligning, but their sexuality is incompatible. Because that's not a box that's very important. Guess why? Sex doesn't pay bills. Unless it's your struggle. Unless it's your career. Mm. It doesn't pay bills. What pay bills is how you and I manage our home and manage our lives. You see what I'm saying? So sex does not always come packaged. That's the one thing. It should. Sorry? It should. In an ideal world, it should. But the truth is, look at it this way. I love seafood. I cook, and I'm good at it. But once in a while, I want to go to an authentic seafood restaurant and eat from another chef. That's mm. sex. We don't, we, don't, we, don't, we don't always want sex from the same chef. Mm. See, the one thing about chefs is they love making food so that many people can be happy. Try telling a chef, I only want you to cook for one person for the rest of your life. Do you think you'll have a passion of being a chef? You'll think twice. That's sex. We're just not allowed to think of it that way, but that's sex. Mm. Kenya is a very sexually vibrant country. Is it? It is. Out of the countries that I've named, that I've lived in, Kenya is the most sexual. Ooh. Any day. Who? Any day. And what do you mean by Even that? foreigners will confirm. They're the best guys to affirm this. They always say, like, you Kenyans are crazy. Like, Kenyans are the only ones. Like, you see, like, we're, we're here. We're in this studio. Today's Friday. We're the only country I know that we can just decide at a drop of a hat. You know what? So we just drive to Nairobi. Let's yeah. just drive to Nairobi. Have one or two and drive back. Mm. Do you think we're driving back? We'll be driving back on Sunday. Or Monday. And maybe Monday there was a podcast. Now you're doing the podcast in the car. <laughs> the guy's studio, you, you become creative. Ah, we can do this. Ah. So we have we decided hey, to do this one out of hey, location. Hey, we decided to do this one out of location. And guess what? It actually works. Yeah. You can tell your story of I was in the studio, met this guy called Madeka. He came up with this crazy whatever. Even the crew is in the car. And they go, hey, what's up? <laughs> That's who we are. Very vibrant. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's. But now, mm. I can see a lot of that. what we've discussed. I can see how your eyes have been. I've, mm. I've been watching your mm. eyes. The mm. way you are a reacting. psychologist. The way they've you been are a, You are a psychologist. And the bottom line is this. Mm. For us to attain that recreational sex that we want, mm. we must change our mindsets. Mm. Because there's too much choice. Mm. Our gadgets give us too much choice. Today, I don't... You see, like, for example, this is my opinion. Dry spell is a choice. It's not a thing in Kenya. Mm. Why is it a choice? People just say they can't find people. No, yes, they can't find people because, first and foremost, you're stuck in your house unless there are thugs coming to your house. It's the only time you're meeting gays. And when you go out, you go to Carrefour. So unless you're twerking in Carrefour, I don't see how you're going to meet people. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And if you're a woman, the way some of you are stone-faced in Carrefour, we can't even approach you. 
And yeah. where are we going to look at somebody? Where, where, where would you go and look for a woman in the supermarket? Yeah, we've been... The aisle for Weetabix. Oh, man. Where? I've seen so those some people I've who I've complain I've seen, I've seen that they don't meet people. Yeah. They're not going out to meet them. Oh, clubs are too noisy. Okay, fine. Uh, there's a woman just the other week. This is what she told me. She told me, um, I've been trying to find good men in the church. And they're all thugs. I was like, did you know that? Those are the most thuggish guys ever. In charge? They hide behind we, the church. We, we, say, we say the women are the thugs in charge. Well, you're all thugs. But my point is, uh, they're full of thugs in church. I would never advise <laughs> you to get something for church. I don't know why. Because in church, they use a certain strategy, which is churchy. This is churchy. Oh, let's come. Churchy and dodgy. Let's, let's do Bible study. Let's come read a book. Here's the book before you know it. Ooh, there's my penis. Shit, how did that get there? <gasps> so that's not the best place. But you've got to be out there. It doesn't have to be a club. It can be outdoor activities. Guys are doing hiking nowadays. There's all these trucks that do all these small, short-term, whatever. You can mm. meet people, but you've got to let yourself out there. And mm. then the other problem is this. You can't meet a small pool of people and say you've met people. Like whenever a woman tells me, um, I've only dated three guys and I've only had sex with two guys and all of them seem to be similar. The truth is most people attract the same dick faces. They don't, first and foremost, their pool is very small. Let's assume, where are we now? When uh, yeah, Milimani. Milimani, oh. So if your pool of men is just Milimani, maybe Kilimani, that means you've not met a guy who could be your potential in South B or in Nakuru, or in Machakos, or in Voi. You're in Milimani and Kilimani where there's a lot of players. They have disposable cash. They know the lingo. They know how to make you, as Kenyans, in get the box. But this guy can't deliver. What he's promising on Friday, by Monday, he's blue-ticking you. He's blocked you. That's your pool of men. So you're wondering why they all behave the same way. There's a guy in Voi who are settled in Voi because he wants to get away from the noise of Nairobi. Now, that guy will tell you, you know what? I think I can be attracted to you for a very long time. And five years in, you'll be like, I'm in the most productive relationship, and everything that comes out of this guy's mouth, even when it pains me, it's the truth. Here in Milimani, Kilimani, you're just dealing with polished liars. <laughs> and they're very good at lying. Uh. They can get a woman to fall like this. First... They know the lingo. They know what women want to be promised. They're visionary guys. You find a guy telling you, oh my God, before I met you, I was lost. <laughs> I've only known you for three days, but I can't breathe without you in my space. Now there's some women who love that. It's like in a play in the head. When she falls for that guy, and then the guy tells her, oh, see, let's, let's fly to Diani. Oh, I don't know. Let's go to Zanzibar. Oh my God, Zanzibar. Then her vagina starts pulsating by itself. Oh my God, Zanzibar! Oh my God, Zanzibar! Her <laughs> nipples are getting hard and stuff. Zanzibar is done. Then she calls me, Madeka. I met this player. Of course, you met a player. Why is he a player? One, because you fell for his tricks. So you're part of the problem. But there's another guy in Voy who told you, just come to Voy. He's thinking, first you want me to take myself to Voy. Yes, because he's saying this has to be a mutual thing. I don't want to work very hard. I want us to work hard together. Yeah. There's a difference. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes people who get in the muck with these idiots, they're partly to blame. See, I always tell women, there are two guys. There's a guy who tells a woman, by the way, I'm sexually attracted to you, I don't want to fuck you. Now, most women will say, this guy is too forward, he's mm. rude. He's rude. And there's another guy. He'll take you for all these coffees and dinner uh, and Kempinski and this. So then he takes for, you out for, of town. For, for three months straight. Then you sleep in the same bed and he tells you, I don't want this to be rushed. Then he starts to cuddle you and you're thinking, wow, this guy is so much better than that Mateka. That Mateka, how dare you? He met you on the first night. He told me he wants to fuck me. That's an idiot. Now, this guy, the difference between me and this guy is he's using what they call the long game. He mm. wants your vagina to twitch by itself. He wants your vagina to levitate towards him. I wanted to eat your vagina now. It was repelled by what came out of my mouth. So the point I'm making is this. Once you're done with Mr. Kempinski, 
Now you'll come to the guy who eats pussy. Because this guy can't eat for shit. He's just very good at promising things. First, you're wondering why you went to Zanzibar. Because in two minutes, the guy was... <laughs> <laughs> be nice, Buana. Be nice to Mr. Then Kempinski. in the morning, he's there telling Be nice you, to Mr. Oh Kempinski. God, last night was amazing. You're thinking, amazing <laughs> with who? Unless you had your own dreams and started fucking yourself, it was horrible. And when Zanzibar, how can you go to Zanzibar to sleep after two minutes? Mm. You were on a flight. You didn't even boat there. Mm. Sex toys and masturbation. Yes. What do you want to know? Mm. A lot. Men say that it is the sex toys that has messed it for them. They can no longer do it. Like you know, just now when I just had that water, yeah, it felt like I was tasting squirt. Yeah. <laughs> God, so amazing. So your question again? Yeah, men what? Men are claiming that masturbation, uh, sex toys yes. are ruining it for them. They can't do it as good as the machine. Uh, that's a fallacy. I have many sex toys in my house because sex toys are exactly that. They're toys for sex. They can be an extension of you or you can see them as a competitor. Mm. And that's what I was telling you. The symbols of this world do not feel like sex toys are not there to compete. That's not why they were designed. Sex toys were scientifically designed because they can give stimulus to the sexual body. That's it. And there's a reason why they vibrate. Because vibrations... It's like when you go for a massage, there's a difference between I just massaging you and trying, and then there's a qualified masseuse who does it so well. Sex toys were designed to hit the spot rather than struggle to hit the spot. Mm. Now, men who think that they're competing, number one, are either lazy or just misinformed. I'm saying this because I've converted a lot of men who hated sex toys. Today, the sex toy is that guy's pal. I'll give you a very good... Uh, Feedback from what I get. He was like, you know what? Sometimes, Mataka, I don't even feel like having sex. But when I know she's horny, rather than tell her no, I bring out the toys. I make her come. She tells me I'm an amazing man. And I didn't have to get tired. I was not in the mood, dude. Like, I just wasn't. And even when I'm in the mood, there's so much I know I can do. And then I bring a few toys, and I'm the one holding the toy, and I'm there talking to the toy. Oh, yeah, let's do it. And she's like, oh, my God. Like, yeah, 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 change, change the speed. At some point, she squats in my face, and by then, I feel like the most powerful guy. And then guess what? This woman does not need to go and fuck another Masimba, because I am the Simba. When she wants, sometimes she even tells me, I don't, I don't want the toy. Bring your thing here. And I'm like, God damn, I'm the man. I found it in my back. Now I know what you were saying. I can share in this stuff. Because when it was just me, sometimes I you tired, I get tired. <laughs> and then she tells me, don't stop. I'm like, what's a stopping? I'm about to die. What do you mean? I'm about to get there. And now she's like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. no, no. I, stop. I need another 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I only got 30 seconds. What the hell? You know what I'm saying? So... The toy Mateka, helped Mateka, him. Can I say something? The toy helped him. You see, you got to look at it that way. Can I say something? Say it. <laughs> the toy helped the nigga. The, all the videos I watched, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> on Spice FM, I don't know where, on MTV. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't have wings. Now you have wings. <laughs> <laughs> did they tell you the rules? <laughs> no, they did. They did. They did. They did. They did. I just don't feel it. I didn't feel as free then as I am. Oh! That's the difference. Yeah. <laughs> My nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is bonkers, man. I know, it's crazy. Uh, you know, so... <laughs> the <toys. laughs> hey, the sex toys became buddies. They're guys who yeah. now order sex toys. They're like, dude, sometimes your mama go out of town. We've not carried a toy. We're having fun. And sometimes we carry them. I've learned that this is about her and me and especially her. I want her to have multiple orgasms with me in the environment. Because I've realized... Team Masimba. If I, if I don't become a Team Masimba <laughs> and I open my different avenues, she'll end up with another nigger who will waste her time. Whereas with just me, we can play as she wants. Now that mentality gets you somewhere with a woman. She starts to look at you different. Mm. And she's like, my man, regardless of what gives me an orgasm, cares about my orgasm. It's very important for men to look good. It's, it's important for you to think like that. Mm. So if you think that a sex toy is your competitor, you need to holler at me. I, I, I'll show you another way. And then you'll thank me. Many men have thanked me. Mm. Trust me. Amazing. <laughs> but then, but then, but then, um, masturbation. Yes. Yeah. 
some people say that uh, it's not it's not it's not it's not it's not christian it's not good what's what's the alternative i don't know well, well that those are religious why do they say those are those are religious controls uh which really i don't want to get into mm. all i can tell you is you own your organ masturbation is just you giving stimulus to your organ and it's with your hand or whatever it is they the men who can just come and just rub their penis on this desk and at some point <laughs> will come there's a guy who will find curtains and rub his penis on the curtain and you just hear ah, ah, that's it so it doesn't matter mm. the thing is people do it because they have an urge to ejaculate mm. the only thing i can tell men is this the men who tell me i ejaculate too much and then i start feeling sick or weak and it's as simple as this if you do anything too much at some point it becomes stale but one thing you're doing is when you ejaculate you are basically not taking in enough zinc to replace what's come out you need to understand when we ejaculate we use energy and we dispel amino acids protein and zinc that's in the semen what builds the semen there's a production factory going on there when you expel that you feel tired your body feels tired because your diet does not have enough nutrients to replenish mm. do you see what i'm saying people who actively are very <coughs> sexual have gone to the science of the diets they need to have for example if you want to up your semen it has to be a lifestyle thing not a two week thing you take smoothies of celery watermelon celery being 80% watermelon being 20% and the watermelon is just because celery has a it has an acquired taste <coughs> sometimes it can be bitter so you mix it with whatever just to mix it whatever and you now start taking that as a lifestyle the way you wake up and have tea or coffee and stuff like that and if you do that as a lifestyle at some point you realize that when you ejaculate you don't feel weak because you're replenishing what you're ejaculating and your ejaculant volume <coughs> is more you know the worst thing that can happen to you is maybe you're the guy who likes blow jobs and there's a man who don't like blow jobs the guy who likes blow jobs the woman even likes to see that splash you know when you ejaculate she wants to see a lot of load can you imagine after all this painstaking stuff she's doing with her mouth and her hand when you ejaculate you just ejaculate three drops two go left one go right it's like you're ejaculating a neat and ugali or something man <laughs> so when you take a diet that increases your semen then you know it's it first your ejaculate is stronger mm. so back to masturbation men are going to be doing it men have always done it uh, women masturbate as well and this is scientifically fact women who masturbate will always enjoy sex more than those who don't because when you masturbate you're exercising your organ you're exercising knowing the triggers of what arousal looks like for you and that's why with masturbation you there are people will tell you like when i masturbate it's far better than having sex with a certain person and that's fact we always think because you're having sex with somebody that sex is going to be amazing that's not the case having sex with somebody is just overrated in terms of or oh, it's special and it's too they must love each other that's crap we're exercising our right to want pleasure the question is whether we'll get it what we do know is a man ejaculates and chances of a woman having an orgasm are slim so we have to know how to work the two but masturbation is going to happen there are men who overdo it and they start having chronic masturbation but there's nothing wrong with masturbation it's actually good what is chronic masturbation when you overdo it like, when like uh, i've met men who masturbate almost every 10 5 minutes wow like when he says he's going to the bathroom he's masturbating that's a lot that's a lot yes it's like a woman telling you uh, fuck me but i want you to do it today 50 times Ooh. you might suddenly have a very early morning hey, hey, i'm so tired yeah. we have questions yes from the audience okay from a woman right Uh, is sexual stamina only for men only or women also need it well uh women we both need stamina otherwise we won't last mm. but women tend to respond 
depend okay the traditional sense is <laughs> most men are usually on top uh, if the ma- if the woman is on top then maybe the man stays still and she's the one moving but most of the times traditionally the man needs stamina because uh, the woman's there and he's on top of her, especially if he's missionary which is a very regular or rather common uh, position mm. um women respond well to sex if their vagina is receiving it well she like for example when i condition a woman's vagina these are the f- this feedback i've gotten from women um i've slept with two guys one of them made me come but i didn't squirt but the other guy within 5 minutes he causes me to drench the bed like we can't sleep on that bed so we have to turn the mattress and that's why i tell women when i condition your vagina your vagina becomes a ferrari i cannot dictate which driver you're putting in the ferrari does that make sense it doesn't okay do you watch formula 1 yes who's your driver ah uh, that guy from the uk hamilton yes and the other one yeah. uh, mr pen is okay. it okay yeah mm. now you and i are drivers you drive a car correct yeah are we as good as them? no no No, so, far from it. Assuming the car is a vagina. You see where I'm going with this story? Mm. Who do you think is going to drive the car better? Ah, uh, us or them? Them. The truth is some men will be others and some men will be Formula 1 drivers. That's out of my control. Mm. Do you wow. get my point? Yes. <laughs> I do. <laughs> How do you deal with extraordinary clitoral sensitivity? What do you mean by extraordinary? I don't know. The fact that you've used that word doesn't 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 are you saying it's overly sensitive? Yes. Okay. Well, the clitoris is sensitive. It depends. Is it sensitive due to arousal or is it just sensitive like the way you like if somebody tries to tickle me, I'm like, "Oh, I'm feeling too sensitive today." Mm. So, let's assume she's talking about she's been aroused to the point where it's overly sensitive and that's where now recreational sex comes in rather than procreational sex. I have to know how to change. Like for example, her clitoris can be so sensitive and it's sensitive based on maybe there's a way of sucking it. And instead of sucking, now I just take the tip of my tongue and I just lick it slowly. The sensitivity, it will be there, but it won't be intense and she'll because I've slowed the rhythm now, she'll be the one to say, "Oh, please continue what you're doing." Yet just a few seconds ago, she was saying oh i think i want you to stop but what she's actually saying is if you changed the rhythm i'll want you to continue but if you constantly rub it the way you were rubbing it's too sensitive does that make sense i see so i've slowed it now mm. so the sensitivity is different but now you see the thing is this um our species don't listen the men yes mm. And when I say don't listen means when a woman tells you go slow she hasn't said go faster. Mm. So I don't know why men take it upon themselves to up a gear. When she tells you there you go somewhere else. Who are you fucking? How yourself? Can't you can't you understand English when you're inside the vagina? She told you there. You've gone there. What the, what's going on? So some of these problems is not her body it's also the person who is inflicting the stimulus is not listening. Mm. And that's why I said you find women become our competitors because I get a lot of women who tell me when I ventured and I slept with a woman she made me come. Like there's a woman who told me in one night another chick made her come more times than her her dude has done in the last 7 years that should tell you something Ooh. you know in school when we were told that uh, you need to up your game mm. pull up your socks yeah pull up something pull up yeah. your balls whatever yeah. you need to do but that in itself is fact mm. now a lot of men don't want to hear that but it's fact mm. do you know if you're going to if you're going to be a competitor in this game i told you it's a sport you have to know what's happening out there you can't just say because i'm a man i know that's crap mm Does that make sense? Yeah. I can't orgasm at all. Is there something wrong with me? No. But there's something wrong with your vagina. And wrong means it can be rectified. Your vagina just needs to be conditioned. If a vagina is conditioned, a woman can have an orgasm. Mm. It's as simple as that. 
Okay. But it's because it's her vagina that causes her to have an orgasm. It's not the partner she's sleeping with. Mm. I think that's where people go wrong. Mm. For example, men know we don't need the vagina to ejaculate. Mm. We just tend to like the stimulus of a vagina to ejaculate. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like we don't need vaginas and neither vaginas don't need our penises. But we just tend to like the feel mm. of the two together mm. depending on who we're with. Mm. Make sense? So she yeah. just need vagina conditioning. Mm. She can How do I stop again. faking orgasms without offending my boyfriend? Uh, why do you feel you're offending him? First and foremost, stop faking it. Don't. Why are you faking it for him? So you tell him to grow a vagina. Why are you doing it for him? He has a penis. Is he faking it? Mm. Is he inside going, oh, I'm coming. Then like semen spews out of his nose. No, mm. he's ejaculating. So why are you faking it when he is not probably giving you the stimulus that can make you orgasm? Mm. It's as simple as that. There's a woman who cannot naturally orgasm. So regardless of the guy she sleeps with, she won't orgasm. But there's a woman who knows she had an orgasm, but her current partner, because he does not listen to what she likes, she can't have an orgasm. So I need to know which guy that is. Mm. But she should not be faking it. Like I, Men should not want women to fake it. It's not our responsibility to give them orgasms, but it's our responsibility to find out how she can have an orgasm. Mm. Those are two different thought processes. Mm. So, and the other thing is, I want her to stop faking it because at some point, she might start resenting that man's sex. Because she's thinking, at this point, I have to start mourning. Oh, oh, babe, have you come? Oh my God, I came five times. That gets tiring. Mm. I can't imagine how women go through that crack because I've never had a vagina. But I would hate to fake it all the time. Mm. Baby, is my vagina good? Oh my God, it's the best <laughs> in the world. Oh my God, look at my eyes. Oh my God, I'm turning into a zombie. Like, who what the fuck is... does that all the time? The women who do that for years. What is the difference between... They need to G be applauded, given a gold medal or something. <laughs> what is the difference between G-spot and the clit? Exactly that. The G-spot is inside the vagina on the upper wall and the clit is outside. And, by the way, it's a good question. Uh, the, every clit is this long. Some are longer inside. Like, the length of the clitoris mm. is basically like a middle finger. Mm. Then again, depending on whose middle finger. Uh, but we only tend to see the hood. Yeah. I can tell you the women who have, based on the vast vaginas I've seen around the world, the women who tend to have larger or longer clitorises, like in Kenya, are Kisi women. Mm. I know that for a fact. Great. You know, so after you've seen over 6,000 vaginas, you tend to know what, seen. what's there and what's not. It's a lot to see, bro. Sasa, uh, we are done. My eyes are good. They're, they're but I want you to talk about yourself now, about your services in the, la in the, next, in the next one minute. Just tell us about how you do, how people can reach out to you. Okay. Because I think that's a give and take. When you come to, my, to, to the podcast, I think yes. it is important to market yourself and All see right. where people can, can get you. Yes. Super. So if you want to find me, uh, you can find me online. I'm on IG. I'm on Facebook. Um, I have a blog called mauricetherapy.com. Um, my number is everywhere. It's on Facebook. It's on IG, especially mm. IG. It's, I'm, I'm very approachable. Best thing is text me, but just don't text me hi. Just text me hi. My name is this. This is why I saw you. And these, you know, tell me more about your services. We engage. And yeah, as you can see, I'm an approachable guy. <laughs> and now you are on I, TikTok. I, and now I'm on TikTok because <laughs> of you. <laughs> Thank and, you. Thank and you. also courtesy to my friend Smalls. Yeah. Uh, who talked me into being on mm. uh, TikTok as well. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, so it it's was been, it's been enjoyable. It was been amazing, man. That's bonkers. Yeah, in, invite me again. I, I shall come back. Definitely. I will. Yes. So thank you very much, people of the internet. These people are called people of the internet. That's hey, how I people of the internet. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for listening in. Thank you very much for viewing this episode. It's a new channel, and I would ask you that you may subscribe, uh, leave comments, and then say something to algorithm so that Google can know that something great is going on here. Yeah, follow this guy, man. He's, yeah, a, he's a great yeah, guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. And until another video, thank you for now.